discussed diagonal matrices, uh, we observed that given a diagonal matrix A, if we consider the corresponding linear transformation LA, then LA uh, dilates each of the vectors in the coordinate basis, in the standard basis uh, and it dilates it by the corresponding uh, value in the diagonal. So in this video, we will explore this phenomenon in much greater detail for uh, in much greater depth uh, for an arbitrary uh, linear transformation from a vector space to itself. So let us begin by considering a linear operator T on a vector space V. So let T from V to itself be a linear operator on V. So recall that a linear operator is just a linear operator on V is just a linear transformation from V to itself. That is T is a <coughs> linear transformation from V to itself. So for example, T being the identity map is the simplest example. So for example, consider T equal to the identity map of V. Then I V of V is equal to V for all V in capital V. Uh, next simple example will be a multiple of lambda I V. So this is one example. Let us consider another example. Now let T be equal to lambda times I V. Then T V is equal to lambda I V on V acting on V which is equal to lambda times V. So notice that our uh, first example where the linear map is linear operator is the identity map. It dilates the uh, vector space every vector every vector in the vector space by 1 or in other words it leaves it fixed. And the second uh, example every vector is dilated by lambda. So if we consider an arbitrary linear transformation uh, this need not be the case. It need not uh, dilate every vector. However, there are some special vectors in the vector space which might get dilated by a, a given linear transformation and such vectors have a special name. They are called the eigenvectors. So let me now give a definition. So this is the definition of an eigenvector. So let T from V to itself be a linear operator on V or a linear transformation from V to itself. We say that a non-zero vector, we say that a non-zero vector, notice that we are imposing a condition of the vector being non-zero. A non-zero vector V in capital V is an eigenvector of T if T V is equal to lambda V for some scalar lambda. So if the vector V is getting dilated by some lambda, then V is said to be an eigenvector provided V is not uh, the zero vector. The scalar lambda is called the eigenvalue corresponding to V, right, is called the, so let me just underline this eigenvector of T, and this is called the eigenvalue corresponding to, so the eigenvector We have defined two objects here. One is the notion of an eigenvector, which is basically a non-zero vector in the given vector space, which is dilated by our uh, linear operator. And the second one is the eigenvalue, which is the degree to which it is getting dilated, or in other words, it is the scalar lambda 
such that tv is equal to lambda times t. So let us look at a few examples. So maybe a good example would be let us consider some simple example say from R2 to itself. Let t be a map given by t of uh, say x y is equal to 2 x and 3 y. So, we have already seen some examples here, uh, we will come back to that maybe, but let us just focus on this particular example t of x y is 2 x comma 3 y. So, you notice uh, the coordinate basis are eigenvectors. So, let uh, v 1 be equal to 1 0, then t v 1 is equal to t of 1 0 which is 2 comma 0 which is equal to 2 times v 1. Similarly, if v 2 is equal to 0 comma 1, then t v 2 is equal to 0 comma 3 which is 3 times 0 comma 1 which is equal to 3 v 2. So, the coordinate basis here are uh, eigenvectors. So, the standard basis are examples of eigenvectors. If you observe carefully, T is a linear map, right? There are plenty of examples of eigenvectors. Any vector, in fact, any vector of the type a comma 0 is an eigenvector of T. In fact, any vector of the type a comma 0 is an eigenvector of t with eigenvalue 2. Also notice that not every vector is uh, an eigenvector of t. So, 1 comma 1 for example is not an eigenvector. of t. Okay, so, we have spent, so y is a comma 0 an eigenvector. So, let me just put it in square brackets why this is the case. t of uh, a comma 0, this is just 2 a comma 0 which is just 2 times a comma 0, that is all. And why is 1 comma 1 not an eigenvector? t of 1 comma 1 is 2 times 1 2 and 3 times 1 3, so 2 3 which is not a scalar multiple of 1 comma 1, okay. Let us look at more examples, let us put numbers, this is example 2. If T is the identity map, that is the first example maybe we should have considered, then every vector is an eigen, every non-zero vector, notice that the definition of an eigenvector we have imposed this condition. Every non-zero vector is an eigenvector. With eigenvalue 1. Similarly, with the dilation lambda times i v. The eigenvalue there will just turn out to be lambda. Okay. So, every vector, another example, every vector in the null space of our given linear transformation T, which is if, is if T from V to V is not injective, what happens? Then the null space of T has non-zero vectors. Let V be in N of T, null, null space of T or maybe let me write a null of T so that there is no confusion such that uh, v is not equal to the 0 vector. So, the 0 here is the 0 vector and what does uh, t do to our v? Then t v is equal to 0, the 0 vector of v, but that is nothing but the scalar 0 times our vector v. So, again it is your job to keep track of which 0 is uh, where. So, this 0 is in the vector space V, this 0 is in the 
real numbers it is a scalar. Okay. So, that means hence V which is a non-zero vector is hence an Eigen vector hence V is an Eigen vector. And what is the corresponding Eigen value? Eigen vector with Eigen value 0. We have only demanded that the Eigen vector should be non-zero. We have not demanded that the Eigen value cannot be uh, the 0 scalar, we have never not demanded that at all. So, yeah, so V is an Eigen vector with uh, Eigen value 0. Maybe a good exercise to think over would be to show that a uh, vector uh, or uh, linear transformation uh, is invertible if uh, all Eigen values are non zero. Okay, let us look at more examples. So, next would be maybe example 4, I think. Yeah, example 4. So, consider this uh, linear map. Let T be the map from R2 to R2, which is given by a reflection along a line. So, let me just draw it for you. Suppose this is our ma uh, Cartesian coordinates. So, let this be let this be 4 and let this be 3. So, this is our 4 comma 3 and let us look at the line joining the points. Okay. So, let us draw the line and then mark the point. This is our point 4 comma 3 and let us look at uh, the reflection along this particular line which is joining 0 and 4 3. So, any point here is mapped to a point corresponding point here. So, in particular let us uh, look at this line. So, let me point so I draw it like this. So, uh, 4 3 uh, uh, 3 minus 4 would be a uh, perpendicular so it is very cute and like this. So, this point will just turn out to be 3 minus 4 right. So, this is perpendicular and uh, what will T do to 4 3? Notice that if uh, V 1 is equal to 4 comma 3 then E V 1 if you reflect the vector 4 3 along the line join 0 to 4 3 it does not do anything to it, it just fixes it right. So, this is equal to our V 1. What about uh, the vector say V 2? So, let V 2 be the perpendicular vector which is 3 minus 4 and if you reflect it, it will go to the other direction, the other direction it will just be minus 3 4 right. Then T V 2 is equal to minus 3 4 which is equal to minus of 3 comma minus 4 which is minus of V 2. So, V 1 and V 2 then so this let T be reflection along L where L is the line joining L is the line joining 0 0 and 4 comma 3. Okay. So, then T as Eigen vectors V 1 and V 2 notice that V 1 and V 2 both are non 0 as Eigen vectors V 1 with Eigen value 1 and uh, V 2 with uh, Eigen value minus 1. All right. So, let us come back to this example later. So, we will we'll revisit this example, it is a good example to have at the back of your uh, mind while 
studying uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So next, uh, next, so we have defined what an eigenvector and an eigenvalue is for a linear transformation. So linear transformations and matrices are very closely related, and uh, we would like to define a uh, corresponding or similar notion for matrices as well. So let's do that next. Right, so we do not consider 0 to be the, the 0 vector to be the eigenvector. So always keep that in mind because uh, in the definition itself we are incorporating that an eigenvector should be a non-zero vector because uh, there is no eigenvalue which can be associated to, uh, to the zero vector. Every scalar will turn out to be an eigenvalue and we do not want that. All right, so let us now look at what is meant by the uh, notion of an eigenvector and eigenvalue for a matrix, for an n cross n matrix. So let us start with um, an n cross n matrix. Let A be an n cross n matrix with real n trace, of course. So we say that uh, a vector a vector V in Rn is an eigenvalue uh, of A with I oh sorry eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda with eigenvalue lambda if V is an eigenvector of the linear transformation LA with eigenvalue, eigenvalue lambda. So if V is an eigenvector, V is an eigenvector of LA with eigenvalue lambda. So for all practical purposes, uh, we do not distinguish between the matrix A and the uh, linear operator LA. Oh yes, I should probably uh, introduce one more example which is something which you have already seen. Let us consider a matrix, uh, okay, so this is good, uh, at a good place we will be looking at this example. So let A be a diagonal matrix, A, A1 to An. Then my claim is that each of the eigenvectors of A or each of the standard basis uh, vectors is an eigenvector of A. Then EI, let us just see what uh, LA does to EI. Then my claim is then EI is the is a is an eigenvector of A. So we should check that it is an eigenvector of LA, right? So LA EI, if you notice, this is just A EI, which is equal to, we have already done this, this is going to be AI times EI. So yes, it is indeed the eigenvector, indeed an eigenvector of A with, uh, so hence EI is an eigenvector. of LA with eigenvalue AI. Okay, next let's let's give us uh, let's give ourselves a definition of uh, what is meant by the eigenspace corresponding to lambda. So let so definition of an eigenspace. So let me write it down. Definition of an eigenspace. So we, have the, the, we have already seen what an eigenvector is and what an eigenvalue is. Let us look at what an eigenspace is. So let T from V to itself be a linear operator. So I will slowly start using this term more frequently operator on V. That means it is a linear transformation from V to itself. Then the eigenspace of a scalar lambda is the set of all vectors such that T V is equal to lambda V. 
So notice that uh, every eigen vector of uh, T with eigen value lambda is in the eigen space of uh, lambda apart from 0, 0 is ob obviously there but uh, every eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value lambda or every eigen vector which has eigen value lambda will also be in the eigen space of T. So let us uh, try to see more about the eigen space of uh, lambda say for example. So if lambda is a scalar, so for lambda in uh, R, let us see what uh, it means to say that T v is equal to lambda v. T v is equal to lambda v can be re rewritten as, uh, this is if and only, if T v is equal to lambda i v v, right. And by the operation of uh, linear transformation, the vector addition of linear transformations, this is if and only if T minus lambda i v of v is equal to 0. So, i e this is if and only if v belongs to the null space of T minus lambda i v. So, v is hence v is in the eigen space of lambda so rather eigen space of lambda is just the null space so the, uh, let me write it more in a more refined manner the eigen space of lambda is the null space of t minus lambda i T minus lambda i v. So, in particular, the eigen space of lambda is a subspace, is a subspace. Of so, lambda is an eigen value if there is at least one non zero vector in the null space of T minus lambda i v, right. So, also observe that lambda is an eigen value if and only if there exists a non-zero vector v in the null space of t minus lambda times i v. But this is the same as telling that uh, T minus i v is not injective. So, this is if and only if, this is if and only if T minus lambda i v is not injective. So, lambda is an eigen value of our uh, given linear transformation T if and only if T minus i v is not injective or if T minus lambda i v is not invertible. So, that is an alternate definition we can uh, keep uh, to check whether something is an eigen value. This is at times useful. For example, let us consider one of the examples we already looked into. Let us maybe consider the first example that that might be a, uh, not put a number, let me put a number. So, recall that the first example was t of x y equal to 2 x comma 3 y. So, let us come back to the, this example. So, consider the example. 1 again revisit it. So, t of x comma y is equal to 2 x comma 3 y. So, we know that we know that both 2 and 3 are uh, eigen values of t and that is quite straightforward because consider t minus 2 times uh, so this is where t is from r 2 to r 2. So, t of uh, consider t minus 2 times i v and we would like to see uh, whether it is uh, eigen space or rather it is null space is uh, just the 0 vector or there are more. But we already know that if you consider uh, t minus 2 i v of say x comma y, this is just going to be equal to 0 comma 3 y, right. 
and clearly the x axis x axis or the subspace let me put it like this plus the subspace y equal to 0 which is a one dimensional subspace is contained in the null space write it here n of p minus 2 i v. Similarly, x is equal to 0 is contained in the null space of p minus 3 times the identity map. So, yes this also tells us that uh, 2 and 3 are eigenvalues. This also tells us that p does not have any other eigenvalue. So, why is that the case? Because uh, consider t minus lambda i v. Uh, let me just leave it as an exercise for you to check that t minus lambda i v is invertible, is invertible for all lambda which is not equal to 2 or 3 and therefore it cannot be not injective. It has to be therefore injective because it is invertible and therefore the null space of t minus lambda i will just have the 0 vector. Therefore, the, it cannot be a eigenvalue. value. Okay. okay, next let us discuss the relationship between uh, diagonal matrices and uh, eigenvectors. So, we have already seen that if you have a diagonal matrix, the coordinate basis turn out to be uh, eigenvectors or in other words the the matrix of the linear transformation corresponding to it is a diagonal matrix, right. So, let us uh, make it uh, more formal here. So, let, let us put it into a theorem or maybe a proposition. This proposition states that a linear operator on a vector space V is uh, uh, having a diagonal matrix if we have a basis which consists of uh, eigenvectors. So, let us start with uh, linear map from V to itself. So, let T from V to V be a linear transform, it is a linear operator on V which is of dimension n let us say which has, which has dimension, which has finite dimension. let us say n. Then if v 1 to v n is an ordered basis of v, consisting of eigenvectors of p, call it beta, beta equal to v1 v2 up to vn be an ordered basis of v consisting of eigenvectors of p, then, so let us remove this then. What do we have as a conclusion? Then the matrix of p with respect to the basis beta will be a diagonal matrix, then the matrix of p with respect to beta is a diagonal matrix. The converse is also true. Let me write it down. Conversely, if the matrix of a linear transformation corresponding to a basis beta is diagonal, then the basis vectors in beta are eigenvectors of p. Firstly, if the matrix of a linear transformation, the matrix of p, if p beta is a diagonal matrix corresponding to 
uh, to an ordered basis beta to an ordered basis beta which is say v1 to vn then v i are eigen vectors of t. So, the proposition tells us that if uh, we have a linear operator with uh, a basis of uh, eigen vectors of t then with respect to this basis the matrix of the linear transformation will be a diagonal matrix. In fact, we will see that the matrix will have as its diagonal entries the eigen values. And converse is also true that if you have a matrix which has a diagonal which is a diagonal matrix with respect to some basis then the vectors in the basis will be uh, eigen vectors of uh, t. Let us give a quick proof of this it is going to be actually quite short. So, let us see what the first statement says. This first statement says that we have a basis consisting of eigen vectors of t. So, given we have a basis beta which is say v 1 to v n consisting of eigen vectors of t. Let us see what is the uh, matrix of t with respect to beta, but to do that we have to look at what is t of v j right. So, what is t of v j? t of v j is some lambda j times v j right where lambda j is the eigen value of v j. Remember that uh, each of the vj's are eigen vectors of t. So, what does that mean? This implies that t v j beta is just equal to 0, 0, there is a lambda j in the jth column 0 dot 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 0, right, where lambda j is in the jth row, I am sorry, jth But T V J beta will just turn out to be the jth column of uh, the matrix of T and putting this piecing this together we have T beta beta will just turn out to be the diagonal matrix of lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n where lambda i is the eigen value of the eigen vector vj. Let us next prove the converse to this proposition. The converse is uh, telling us that if uh, we have a diagonal matrix, so let uh, beta be beta equal to v1 to vn be a basis such that T beta is a diagonal matrix, be a basis such that we just actually go back in the previous argument and we will get it is equal to say diagonal of lambda 1 to lambda n. But what does that mean? By very definition this just implies well, let me leave it for you to check that T v j is then equal to lambda j v j for j equal to 1 to n. This just tells us that v 1 to v n are eigen vectors corresponding to lambda j. All right, so we have proved the result. So, we have observed that any linear transformation if it has a matrix which is diagonal then there is a basis consisting of the eigen vectors and the vice versa if there is a basis consisting of eigen vectors of uh, our given linear transformation t the matrix is also a diagonal matrix. So, this motivates a uh, definition of that of diagonalizability. So, we say that a linear transformation is uh, diagonalizable if we can get hold of a basis with respect to which the matrix of T is a diagonal matrix. So, let us give a definition.
we say that a matrix, we say that a linear transformation, a linear transformation T from V to itself is diagonalizable if there exists a basis a basis beta with respect let me write it such that the matrix T beta beta is a diagonal matrix. So, one of the uh, most straightforward examples is the linear transformation corresponding to a diagonal matrix. They have to be diagonalizable, right? So, example. In fact, example 1 is diagonalizable T from R2 to R2 such that uh, T of x comma y is equal to say 2x and 3y. This is diagonalizable by the very definition. Why? Because uh, what will be our beta here? Our beta will just turn out to be the standard basis. In fact, uh, uh, let let's start with a diagonal matrix. So let A equal to diagonal of A1 to An be a diagonal matrix. Then La is uh, diagonalizable again with respect to the standard basis of Rn. It is an n cross n matrix which is a diagonal matrix right. So, with respect to the standard basis the matrix of La is a diagonal matrix and by definition it is going to be a diagonalizable uh, linear transformation. Okay, so let us look at one more example we had considered. Let us revisit one of the examples which we had promised to revisit, which is uh, which is this example 4, which is basically the reflection along the line joining 0 to 4, 3. So, let me write it down. So, let us consider, let us revisit example 4. What was our T? T was a map from R2 to itself given by reflection along L which is the line joining the origin to 4 comma 3. Let me not write 2, which is the origin line joining 0 and 4 comma 3, an infinite line. So, you do not want to consider the segment, it is a line and you reflect every vector along this particular line. So, we had noticed that we had two eigenvectors for uh, this linear map T. So, also recall, so recall that 4, 3, the vector 4, 3 and 3 minus 4 are eigenvectors with uh, eigenvalues uh, 1 and minus 1 respectively. We also know that uh, or I will leave it as a, an exercise for you to check that 4, 3 and uh, 3 minus 4 are linearly independent. Uh, linearly independent. What can we say about uh, a set of two vectors in R2 which are linearly independent? It should necessarily be a basis. So, let beta be equal to the set 4, 3 and 3 minus 4. Let us try to see or let us 
just jump up to look at what we did prove as a proposition. We have obtained a basis of T which has eigenvectors and uh, which has every vector as an eigenvector. So this means that T with respect to beta is equal to is equal to 1 0 0 minus 1. So this particular form is quite nice. So this particular form is quite nice because if you now consider t square, so what is going to be t square? If you notice this is going to be again beta with respect to beta, this will just turn out to be the product of this matrix with itself which is going to be the identity matrix, which is the identity matrix of the identity with respect to the basis beta. And hence we have obtained hence the matrix the linear transformation T when multiplied by with itself will give you back the identity. So it is an inverse of itself that is what we have just proved. So right, so if we can get hold of a, a, a basis which has eigenvectors then it is quite useful as you can notice. We can say a lot more than what meets uh, the eye directly. All right, so we have just uh, defined what is meant by diagonalizable for a linear transformation. We would also like to do the same for a matrix. So let A be an arbitrary n cross n matrix. So let A be an n cross n matrix. So we'll say that uh, A is diagonalizable if the corresponding linear transformation is diagonalizable. We say that A is diagonalizable if the linear transformation T A sorry L A is diagonalizable. So notice that uh, A to begin with need not be a diagonal matrix, A could be some arbitrary matrix. And uh, what is L A? L A is the linear transformation corresponding to A. So if uh, you look at the standard basis and look at the matrix of L A with respect to the standard basis, we will get back A. But A need not be a diagonal matrix to begin with. However, if you consider the linear transformation L A and uh, if we could get hold of uh, some basis of uh, R n with respect to which our linear transformation L A is a diagonal matrix, then we say that A is also diagonalizable or then we say that A is diagonalizable. So needless to say uh, examples all diagonal matrices are already diagonalizable with respect to the standard basis you look at the matrix of L A all diagonal matrices. are diagonalizable. Okay, let us now look at a necessary and sufficient condition on when we can say that a matrix is diagonalizable. That is captured in the next proposition. So proposition. So let A be an n cross n matrix then A is diagonalizable if and only if we can get hold of a diagonal matrix D and an invertible matrix Q such that A is Q D Q inverse if and only if there exists a diagonal matrix D and an invertible matrix Q such that A is equal to Q D Q inverse.
So notice that uh, A is equal to Q D Q inverse tells us that A is similar to D, but D is a diagonal matrix. So this is our rephrasing. An n cross n matrix is diagonalizable if and only if it's similar to a diagonal matrix. Diagonalizable if and only if A is similar. We call the definition of similar. We say that two matrices are similar. A and B are similar if A is equal to something like Q B Q inverse, where Q is some invertible matrix. So A is similar to a diagonal matrix. So this is a good characterization to keep in mind. Let us give a proof of this proposition. So suppose A is diagonalizable. Oh, I have already stated the proposition. Sorry, I was writing proof. So let us look at a proof of this statement. So we have already assumed let us assume that uh, A is diagonalizable. So let us let us assume. Let's assume that A is diagonalizable. What does that mean? That means that the that means that the matrix L A, that matrix is uh, diagonal with respect to some basis. So so let beta equal to say v1 to vn be a basis, let me call it beta prime, beta let us keep it for uh, the standard basis. So let uh, beta prime be a basis for basis of Rn such that La beta prime beta prime is is equal to a diagonal matrix. So let us say this is diagonal of uh, A1 to An. So let us call this D. So we have assumed that A is diagonalizable. By definition, LA is diagonal. It is a diagonal matrix. Or LA is a linear transformation which has a diagonal matrix which are with respect to some basis. Let us call that beta prime. So with respect to beta prime, LA has the matrix representation given by D. But then what is LA? LA is just uh, I composed with LA composed with I, where I is the identity matrix. So LA is just IV, LA, IV or where V, IV is the, so I, let me just drop the IRN. Where I R N is the identity matrix. Sorry, identity linear transformation in R N. And now let's look at uh, the basis, the matrix of L A with respect to beta. L A beta beta, where beta is the standard basis. So this is equal to A. Let beta be the standard basis and hence by definition L A beta beta is nothing but A. But let us just write it now as L A or I L A I from beta to beta. Now let us write this to be equal to I L A I from beta to beta prime, beta prime to beta prime, beta prime to beta by the very definition of uh, or by the consequence of uh, how the matrices behave with respect to composition. Let us call Q to be the matrix. So let uh, Q be the matrix. I beta prime beta. Then this is a change of basis matrix. Then Q inverse is nothing but I beta beta prime. This is something which we have already seen. And therefore, A is nothing but Q. What is the matrix of LA with respect to beta prime? 
I recall that beta prime was exactly that basis with respect to which LA was a diagonal matrix. So this is QD, Q inverse and that is precisely what we had set out to prove. Recall what we had written in the proposition. This is diagonalizable if there is a matrix that which is diagonal D and an invertible matrix Q such that A is equal to QD Q. Okay, now let us look at the converse. We have only shown one side of the proposition. So to prove the converse, let A be equal to Q D Q inverse where D is a diagonal matrix and uh, Q is an invertible matrix. So we also know that uh, the fact that D is a diagonal matrix tells us that D E J is uh, lambda J E J where lambda J is the jth entry uh, along the diagonal, right. So what we will do is let us consider the following vectors, beta be equal to, so this is the standard basis, so let beta be the standard basis. Then what do we know about uh, D E J? By definition D E J is something like lambda J times E J, where lambda J is obtained in the lambda 1 to lambda n, right? Okay, let us now consider beta prime where beta prime is given by q e 1 up to q e n and let us notice how beta prime uh, how uh, a behaves on beta prime. So notice that uh, d q inverse of q e j will just be equal to d e j which is equal to lambda e j right. So what is going to be Q then Q D Q inverse of Q E J is going to be Q of lambda E J but this is a linear map this is going to be lambda times Q E J. That means Q E J is a eigenvector for Q D Q inverse. Q E J is an eigenvector of Q D Q inverse. So what do we have now? Beta prime is a set, so recall that beta prime is a set consisting of eigenvectors of Q D Q inverse. But uh, let me put a claim down, this beta prime is a basis of R m. If we prove this claim then we are done because then we would have obtained a basis of Rn which consists uh, exclusively of uh, eigenvectors of uh, our given matrix, right, or given linear transformation, whichever way you want to look at it. But then what is beta prime? Beta prime is the image of a basis under an invertible linear transformation. I leave this as an exercise for you to check at this time that If you look at the image under, a, an, under an invertible linear transformation, then that will turn out to be a basis. So let me just leave it as an exercise for you to check this part. And with this, we have obtained a basis with respect to which the matrix of Q D Q inverse is diagonal. Hence, Q D Q inverse is, di is diagonal. with respect to beta prime, which is the same as saying that A is diagonalizable.
Okay. So, if we actually look at this proposition carefully, it is telling us that uh, a given matrix is diagonalizable if and only if it is similar to a diagonal matrix. And the previous proposition was telling us that uh, some linear transformation is uh, diagonalizable if we can get hold of a basis consisting of uh, eigenvectors, right. So, putting these together, we can explicitly say what our uh, D and uh, what our Q is going to be. So, let us just write down a proposition explicitly mentioning what our D and Q J are. So, uh, proposition. So, let A be an n cross n matrix suppose V 1 to V n are vectors or it is an ordered set so our vectors in R n such that A V J is equal to lambda J V J and such that they are linearly independent and let us just call it beta and such that beta is linearly independent. Then a is equal to q d q inverse where q is the matrix obtained by inserting the vectors v 1 v 2 up to v n and d is the matrix obtained by putting in the corresponding eigenvalues. So, we can very explicitly compute the eigenvalues of V j. Okay, let us give a proof of this. So, we have already done all the uh, hard work. Let us just go back and see what we had noticed. We had noticed that uh, we will get an equation of this type we will get A is Q D Q inverse where Q is I beta prime beta. Yeah, so, let us uh, let us just redo it. Let us uh, uh, recall that by uh, or from the proof of the previous proposition. previous proposition we have l a beta beta which is our our matrix a this is equal to what do we call this ma uh, thing let's call this beta prime the proposition let's call the ordered basis to be beta prime so notice that this is linearly independent forces it to be a basis because it is n linearly dependent vectors in a vector space of dimension n. So, this will just turn out to be equal to L a beta beta prime sorry beta prime beta no 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 this will be i beta prime beta and i beta beta prime. But what is L A beta beta prime beta? L A beta prime beta is just uh, beta prime beta prime is just diagonal of lambda 1 to lambda n, where lambda i are such that A V j is equal to lambda j V j, where lambda j are such that 
a v j is equal to lambda j v j and what remains is uh, to check for what is i uh, beta prime beta. So, this is the change of basis matrix from beta prime to beta. So, what will be the jth column of uh, this matrix? The jth column will be i of v j where v j is the jth vector in the ordered basis beta prime. So, i of v j is just equal to in the jth column of this change of basis matrix. Let me write it again, let me write it afresh. The jth column of the change of basis matrix i beta prime beta is the column vector of v j and therefore, therefore i beta prime beta which is let us say q is nothing but v 1 to v n. Okay, so, in the next video let us discuss uh, technique for computing the eigenvalues of a given linear.